Hey everybody, welcome to the demo for Voice of Cards The Owl Dragon Roars. This might be a little surprising because this is not an indie game at all. It's actually being published by Square Enix and the team uh, developing this, the team behind this is actually the team behind Nier and the Dragon Guard series. Uh, there's, there's numerous people that worked on Dragon Guard 3 and then I saw the director worked on the original Dragon uh, I think the creative director worked on the original Dragon Guard, of course, local madman and uh, Yoko Taro is also there. I mean, he's the head of the team. Um, if something I want to mention first is look at the options. I think aesthetically it's so pleasing actually, like it's a little bit cumbersome to use actually. You click on text and then there's, you know, you have uh, a lot of choices actually. For example, emphasize the important text in red or underline it. For me, red is better, underline doesn't read so easily, but something that's important that I want to mention first is the sound. If we go to the background music, I have it on quiet now, so you can hear me and the sound effects are also on quiet, but what I actually have on loudest are the voices. So in this uh, card-based RPG is what they call it, like I, I haven't seen anything about this game by the way. Um, they it seems like they have a fair bit amount of voice acting from what my friends have told me and i want you guys to be able to hear that actually so when somebody's talking i will shut up and let them talk and you can uh, hopefully hear them at a reasonable volume with this like when i click on this they will say welcome uh to the to the world of cards or something like that just give it a listen here welcome to voice of cards oh yeah they say welcome to voice of cards Welcome to Voice of Cards. So I feel like the loudest matches my voice the best, while the background music isn't super loud yet. But this is just uh, something right off the bat. Let's get into it and see what this demo even has to offer. Little deck. I'm excited, man. It looks so good. Also, the team is fantastic. Good afternoon, or should I say evening, uh, morning, morning? At afternoon. any rate, I am the Game Master. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards, which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Very good. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> Welcome to Voice of Cards. Never heard that one before. <laughs> That's a little awkward after listening to the menu for like 10 times to figure out the right volume. <laughs> Welcome to Voice of Cards. It's already burnt into my brain. But actually, one reason why I'm so excited for this game is... The Dragon Guard series, the Nier series, and then also, of course, Nier Automata, the newest entry. The gameplay has never really wooed me or fascinated me that much. It was always the story, and this seems like it might be more story focused, maybe with a lot of decisions we can make. And I always have really loved the world building the team has uh, showcased so far. So I feel like we're already in for a treat here. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Please tell me more, GM. Through a realm of sword and sorcery you will travel, battling bloodthirsty monsters as you strive to realize your ambitions. That sounds good so far. I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. And I wish my parents told me this. <laughs> and, and you are? Who might you be? Uh, he just told us? Who might you be? I? I am merely a witness to your exploits. Okay. Very humble. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. Okay. See you, big papa. Let's see how serious this game is, by the way. Hmm. Looks like a throne room to me. This is Castle Advent. Queen Nilla reigns over the kingdom from within its walls. All right, Queen Nilla. Three white-clad adventurers have gathered here at the Queen's summons. 
Present yourselves, O oh faithful of the Ivory Order. Wow, well, look at this illustration, man. <laughs> I'm 100% in. Do we get to pick a hero or something? Your piece is in the middle of the screen. Use the WASD keys to move in the direction you want. Okay. Didn't realize there was a way to move. Move to the queen, new objective. As you continue on your journey, your objective will change. Press the E key whenever you need a reminder of what to do next. You will see cards with glowing edges on your adventure. Step on to one to trigger an event that will move the story along. Okay, no problem. I mean, that's one hell of a, of a moving animation there. <laughs> Not what I imagined, but I just ninja moved this pawn from the fa from the famous game chess right here. From upon her throne, the queen regards the adventurers. So you are disciples of the order. Apparently so. The youngest of the three steps forward. She holds herself with well-born grace. You can certainly see that there's, this is a Dragon Guard slash Nier design. I mean, there's, there's uh, something very obvious going on here. A famous Yokotaro quote, I really like women. I am Winifred of the Ivory Order, your majesty, she says. I lead this fellowship. She bows, glancing to her two companions. It's nice how they move the cards sometimes to accentuate that the characters are in fact alive and moving. In response, the stern looking one inclines his head and brusquely names himself Berwin. I, I like that it's not only like all oh, the, the priestess or whatever has a boob window. He's like, yeah, you know what, shoulder free. I trained those muscles and I'm gonna show him. Good on you, Berwin. The older man is the picture of courtesy, as he genuflects and introduces himself as Hedwin. He told like also if you just showed me this card, I would be like, isn't he in Dragon Guard Free? I'm pretty sure there's like an old man who even rocks this kind of air accessory or something similar. Don't want to go into his character because one is the spoiler and the other thing is it's also kind of a controversial character. Hello, milady. It is these three our story follows today. All right, In the White Rope Adventurers. Party. party time, boys. The Queen acknowledges the fellowship with a nod. In a soft voice, she explains her errand. Okay, explain away, Queen Nilla. Someone has stolen the royal treasure. I bid you reclaim it. A little treasure hunt doesn't doesn't seem too. The nefarious to me? Under normal circumstances, I would entrust this to my soldiers, but I do not wish to spread thin my forces with the recent monster troubles. It seems the troubled queen is judged she can entrust this matter to none but the Ivory Order, beloved of the people and unmatchable in battle. So th I feel like this is already a contradiction, right? Like, if you have monster troubles, and she doesn't want to spread her forces thin, then why would you send the strongest, or like some of the strongest people to go after your like family treasure or whatever? Wouldn't they be better served just beating the monsters back and you can send some of the weaker soldiers? Am I, am I smelling some intrigue here? I'm gonna get backstabbed? It is our honor to serve you, your majesty. And thus, the quest falls to the fellowship. At least that's, that's my logic, right? Maybe... They didn't even think about that, or maybe they see the exactly the other way around. Short of any clues that could lead them to the culprit, however, they press the queen for further information. What will you ask the queen? What is the royal treasure? Did you see the thief, your majesty? Sure, there will be a reward. I don't really care about the reward here. Especially not when we are playing as what seems like almost like a holy order kind of thing. So either what is the royal treasure or did you see the thief? I don't like that. I'd say did you see the thief? I would like actually to ask like do you have an idea who the thief might be or something like that? Because I, I don't know I feel like she maybe didn't see the thief so let's 
just ask what is the royal treasure. I just assume you only get to ask one, and if this is a fluke, it's wasted, maybe? The or maybe it's not so bad. The the queen what the royal treasure is. What is it? The queen describes a bottle containing a certain liquid. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to make a bath water joke. Without it, she trails off, but the desperation in her voice suggests its loss could spell disaster for the kingdom. Dang, dude, she really misses her Gatorade. What will you ask the queen? Oh, okay. Did you see the thief? The fellowship asks the queen if she knows anything about the thief. Ah, okay. It's not quite what this question says. Like, this is just, did you see? And this, the other one is like, do you know anything about them? This is exactly what I wanted to ask, actually. The queen says witnesses might be found at Nexton. All right. Why? Why would that be? Shall there be a reward? Usually, one would expect recompense for this sort of undertaking. As demanding a reward would go against the tenets of the Ivory Order, you hold your tongue. Mm, you see, like my first hunch is actually right. I kind of thought we, had, yeah, we. I mean, Ivory Order, right? But I kind of thought we are already like a Holy Order or something, so. Would have, would have felt very weird to ask this question, but they kind of let me ask every question, so I just the Queen, did. however, has already said she will reward the Fellowship with whatever they desire. Hmm, whatever we desire. There must be a catch to this, like, it can't be that easy. It's not just, like, get my Gatorade back and, you know, you can have your harem <laughs> or whatever. I don't know why this is where my mind went first, but, yeah. I feel like we're probably just gonna get disposed of or something. Yoko Taro really likes writing like fucked up stories. I really have to tell you. It seems the royal treasure is just that important. I smell trap here. I don't trust her. Terry no longer here. I await news of your success. Yeah. The sure fellowship you do. bows and takes their leave. Yeah, let's go, boys and girl. Take our leaf. Dang, this is quite a big deck, huh? Head south to Nexton, alright? He wishes my command. Press the escape key to open the menu. There you can perform various actions such as saving and changing skills or equipment. The cards you encounter on your journey will be added to your collection, which can also be found from the menu screen. Please give it a look from time to time. Just familiarize ourselves with it right away. Ah, oh, nice. Wow. Okay, I like how this screen looks, man. Oh, I would Actually, this is one of those games where I feel like, man, can you play this on a tablet? You know, to just like emul emulate, like dragging the uh, the piece or the, the cards around and stuff like that. It would be so sick. Or even if I just had like a touch screen or something, you know, which I don't. But dang. Okay, yeah, here's the meat shield. A lot of attack, most HP. He's a little bit healthier than the old man. Skills, abilities, equipment. Ah, I see. Lightning strike, downward strike. White heal and magic strike. Ah, and you can look at it like this. Okay, yeah, no problem. I don't think it's super interesting right now because we're at the starting thing, but they, they kind of are the stereotypes I expected. I didn't know whether she would be a white mage, though. I seem, it also seemed like he could have been, but they're all clad in white, so, you know. He has the flame. And the contemplation. Generate one gem. We don't even know what a gem is yet. Okay, looks nice. What about own cards? Ah, oh, this is equipment and so on. Then what is collection? Items, equipment, skills, characters, and monsters. Maybe this is like a beast cherry? They haven't unlocked this yet, okay. Then let's get traveling. Can I just move my piece around here? Nice, I can. I feel like the movement animation is kind of no weird. Time finding the treasure. Winifred strides toward town. Man, like I feel like everything is voice acted all like almost. It's so good actually. Wait, cries Berwin, blocking Winifred's path. Oh yeah, by the way, there's, uh, I didn't show this in the menu, but there's English and Japanese voices, by the way, which I love. 
the more choices you have for languages the better man not only because uh you know accessibility of course is one thing and personal preference but also it can be a powerful tool for learning you know especially in you know a text-based thing like this a monster <laughs> a monster doesn't look you dare stand in our way Edwin scowls at the foul creature I mean you don't have to be such an ass it just looks like a minotaur child it lunges at the fellowship okay bring it bitch you chose this Okay, what do battles in this look like? The fight is on. Take down all the enemies and victory shall be yours. Yes, my lord. Okay. First try dragging magic strike over to your opponent. Alright. Who has less HP? Uh, I assume we do 9 damage. Yes, because and it's subtracted from his defense here. The number in red indicates HP. That's alright. Card's attack is on the lower left. I also already figured out there's two swords behind this. Defense is on the right. Generate one gem. I don't know what exactly a gem is. Oh, you can even click E and see like no buffs, no ailments. That's cool. Deal attack plus free fire damage. That is actually pretty powerful. I should I get rid of this puff first? I don't know the turn order. Maybe we just go from left to right and then they go. So it has four defense. We will do nine damage here. Oh, never mind. We did a critical, and it seems like. Fortune favors the bold. Excuse me, dear GM. We used something from here, so I guess in this treasure chest we have our gem. They're kind of acting like mana. It does it for battle basics. The rest is up to you. Play your hand wisely. Ah, okay. So no, I don't really know where the turn order comes from here. Probably an initiative stat or something. Deal damage, or what is this thing? Add value of roll to attack and deal bolt damage. Cost a gem, I assume, what this is. I just don't know why they're differently colored. Because all of them are the same color, let's just try this. It's a two. I'll take it. Not bad. Results, a good warrior wastes no time. 35 EXP, 42 gold, thank you. The music is beautiful by the way. Winifred heaves a disgruntled sigh as she smooths her rumpled garb. <laughs> okay. Showing no signs of weariness from battle, Berwin silently wipes the monster's Iker from his weapon. Oh no, they say Iker, I always say Iker. <laughs> Edwin inspects the remains of their foe. The queen spoke true, he mutters, his face masked in contemplation. <laughs> About the Iker and Iker thing. The first of all, uh, my best friend and I were playing Terraria and there's a monster called, I call it Iker Sticker, because I'm sure that's the in intention behind it. But some people call the thing Iker, so it just becomes Iker Sticker. And then the pun is kind of lost. Oh man, the, the struggles of not being a native English speaker. Winifred gives a grim nod at his words. Yeah, there be monsters. Mayhap the treasure's theft and the monster's behavior are connected somehow. Yeah, man, like maybe a big minotaur drank the Gatorade or first something. First things first. The Fellowship needs to gather more information. To Nexton. They set their sights. Okay, yeah, it's funny. This is the third time they mention next, and it's like, I get it. Um, I, also, I'm gonna keep referring to the potion or whatever it is as Gatorade because they haven't called it by any name yet. You do this to yourself, game. Enter next. What if I say no? Can I just walk past? 
No, okay, they throw me back. That sucks. <laughs> Thought maybe I could clear the map a little first. Kind of forcing my hand here, that's a right for a tutorial. Lucky for you, there are all sorts of establishments in town to support you on your adventure. Would you care to have them explained? You know what, why not? This is the inn. Understands itself. The apothecary. Here you can purchase items to restore your party's HP, status ailments and more. Armor. They sell weapons and armor. Makes sense. The item shop. Stock handy items to use on your journey. The game parlor. Okay. I'm here to play some card games when you need a break from your travels. Funny. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of already playing a card game here. The travels are the card game. Okay, this is already everything. Nice. Little, short, not even one page. One card information. This is how a tutorial should be, man. Speak to the inhabitants of Naxton to get information on the thief who stole the royal treasure. Nothing easier than that. Firstly, I'm gonna head into the armor. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. And uh, buy. Okay, let's see about this. Uh, can I see for how much this would increase? Oh yes, nice. Okay. So I chose this what this may be even what we have equipped right now, yeah. Okay, here it says current gear. If we have this we get plus three attack. This costs 280 gold. We have 542 right now. Don't really know if we need to buy gear per se. Oh, some fire alarm is going off in the distance. That's annoying. <laughs> Let me quickly close my curtain. Maybe it'll block some of that, that noise. Oh, I just have to unknot the, the curtain holder thing. Oh, Jesus Christ, okay. Just hit something here. There we go. Maybe it's quieter now. It's certainly a little darker for me. Uh, a breastplate. This is your current gear too. A steel breastplate. What, what do we have here? Ah, so this is uh, what both of those are wearing. And here we have a ring of protection for 200. The ring of protection is 200, the steel breast breastplate is also 200 and they seem to have the same value. If I buy this, uh, buy and equip, select who will equip it, you. Okay, that's easy enough. And uh, maybe I should get a new sword just for more damage. Mercenary sword for you, Berwin. Now we have 62 gold left. So now if I head back out of here, I know there's a sell option. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. It won't be all, your proprietor. Uh, what do you have to sell? Equipment, I believe. An iron sword for 25 gold. That's not a lot, but I want the cash. Alright. That'll be all, I think, for now. See you later. Nice talking to you. Weapon arm and accessory cards are only effective once you've equipped them to your characters. No worries, I already did. You have fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked Blacksmith's character story. Okay. What do we have here? I'm too scared to leave town with all those monsters out there. The woman sighs. Yeah, I mean, I'm mainly scared of you brandishing a big kitchen knife here. Now yeah, let's just head through here. Excuse me. There you go, who else is there? Welcome to Nexton, hails a man. Yeah, welcome to Nexton. Anything you want to ask him? Have you heard there was a theft? The Fellowship asks if he's heard anything about the theft of the royal treasure. 
The man's eyes widen. He leans close to Winifred and whispers something in her ear. Welcome to Nixton. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. You fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked mature man's character story. This must be like bios or something, right? Objective, speak to the inhabitants. Uh, if I click here... And then own cards, maybe? Collection, maybe? Characters. Yes, okay. He made a promise the love of his life when they were married. I shall love you till death do us part. One half century later he has proven to be a man of his word. Wait. So are they saying he killed <laughs> his love interest or something? Alright. Okay, let's let's explore a little bit more here. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. No worries, I already bought some equipment, young man. Okay, unlocked average man's story. Thank you. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of the fellowship, she calls out for their aid. <laughs> what do you need? She sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. All right, just protagonist things. Winifred rushes to her and helps her up. Dude, for a second, I thought she was about to attack her or something. Like she just lifts her up by the throat, <laughs> you know. Berwin lifts the woman onto his back, and the fellowship sets out in search of an apothecary. All right. Not quite what I expected, but okay. They don't look like the type of people who would carry an old woman around to an apothecary, but I can respect the decision. Okay, let's transport her as the game puts it. No problemo. You can jump over to upward facing terrain cards. Use the arrow keys to choose the direction you want to jump, then press the enter key. Try jumping to the apothecary like this, and then press enter. Okay. It's a little weird because, narratively speaking, we would know what's going on here, right? Arrive at the apothecary. That was quick. You're welcome, woman. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up and down. <laughs> All right. Nothing holds a candle to Ivory Order medicine, she beams. She turns to the Fellowship, her eyes widening in surprise. You three. It seems she's only now realized the Fellowship are disciples of the Ivory Order. I mean, maybe she should have gotten a curative for her eyes, you know? The woman takes each of their hands in turn, thanking them for their service. The Ivory Order is famous for providing medical supplies throughout the realm, and indeed the wider world. I mean, if she could put away the kitchen knife, you know, that would make me a little less anxious. Every smile the Order brings to someone's face makes Winifred proud to be a disciple. Yes, uh, what, like, you know, the way they are setting it up here, it's 100% that, you know, the Order is actually the bad guys. There's like something super nefarious going on. Enjoy the peace while it lasts. I don't trust it one bit. Okay. Mature woman's flip side story. You can read special stories about the characters and enemies among your collected cards. Progress for the adventure and defeat the myriad enemies in your path to collect every special story. That's nice. View your collection. I mean, why not? We kind of already did, but we can look at her card. Maybe it says something interesting. Uh, characters. Where is the, the woman? There's the young man here. Not that they passed that he didn't wear his hair or arrange his clothes just the way she liked. He was the prettiest girl in the village and one day he was sure she'd notice him. Flip over. 
you can look forward to the backs of these cards and the whole story in the retail version of the game. Immersion absolutely shattered into a billion pieces. Thanks. <laughs> Speak to the inhabitants to gather information. Don't worry, I got it. Got it, fam. What about the item shop, though? How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. Oh, she's cute as heck. Okay, let's buy something. Ah. Uh... I was kind of hoping you had some potions or something. There we go. Oh yeah, I probably should go to the apothecary if I want to buy something. Like potions. Item shop girl's character story, you know? Hate to do it, but I have to take a glance. So they say we have unlocked it, right? But, but where are the other... Where's the other page of cards here? Can I scroll down or something? Oh, there we go. There's no arrow or something that says in which direction you have to move, you know. She was a quick hire. Her gentle disposition was sure to attract a few more customers, they figured. No one was prepared for the crush of, crush of customers that ensued. Yep, and uh, you can look forward to more story in the retail version, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, let's head over to the apothecary again real quick. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. The apothecary catches sight of the fellowship. Ah, the ivory order, to which I owe the prosperity of my humble shop, she says. It's a little weird because we've technically already been here, right? She gestures to the drawers filled with her wares. Pray, choose one of my concoctions and take it at no cost. It shall be a token of my thanks to the Order. Oh, don't mind if I do. The Fellowship insists they will pay as any other customer would, and sets about browsing her wares. All right then. Mind if I do. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, 87 gold, huh? I can afford this south. Uh, I would have... I mean, I can afford an antidote too, actually. I have 87. I cannot afford the Inspirilixer. Inspirilixer? That is a horrible word. Give me an antidote, man. Why not? Thank you. I mean, it wouldn't have hurt you to give that to me for free, but we are so noble. Will that be all? The proprietress asks. Yep, that's all. Okay. Young man. The man claims he saw a suspicious someone leaving the castle grounds carrying what looked to be a medicine bottle. Oh, that sounds good. He didn't get a good look at their face, but says they were nothing but skin and bone. The Fellowship thanks the man for the useful information. The best plot twist would be if it was an actual skeleton. Okay, what do we have here? The woman begs the fellowship for their autographs. She seems to greatly admire the order. You're probably gonna forge something with our signature or something? I know there's nothing to worry about with disciples of the order here, she says, relief flooding her features. The hammering home our ideals and how, you know, upstanding we are so much that this, you know, this doesn't bode well at all. Upon asking, the woman says she was attacked by a monster outside of town. That's not good. A strange creature, she says. Nothing but bones. And it clutched a bottle of medicine as if its life depended on it. Mm hmm A little more information. The thief is as good as caught. Do you have anything new to say, woman? Excuse me. I want to move here. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine. Proclaims the woman, you already swigging said this curative and that. Ah, who do we have here? Apparently, there's a monster lurking around the outskirts of town, stealing medicine, and only medicine. Rumors claim the monster fled to the west. I mean, he looks pretty skinny, so that's suspicious. Thanks to the information gleaned from the townsfolk, 
The Fellowship is all but certain of who has stolen the royal treasure. The first clue was the Queen's description of the treasure, a small bottle containing a certain liquid. Then there's the bony figure seen fleeing town, the skeletal monster clutching the bottle of medicine, and the monster that fled west. From all that information, the Fellowship distills the thief's true identity. <laughs> Who done it? The skeleton monster fleeing west. A scrawny street urchin, or I haven't a clue. Ah, there's, there's... One of them said skin and bones. The other person said there's a skeleton monster. Maybe it just leads to the same thing. Realization strikes Winifred. I know who our thief is. The monster made of bones, Hedwin interjects. The one that fled west. Is it Irwin nods in agreement, as if to say, another sage pronouncement from the great and wise Hedwin. Have my doubts. Winifred clears her throat, proclaims that the fellowship shall head west, out of town, and walks off. Travel west of Nexton in pursuit of the monster. Alright, let me also quickly unveil some stuff here. Unlock man's character story. Okay, this is unveiled. And there's the inn. I don't really think we need to go there. Leave the area. Yes. I would like to see the bone monster. While exploring the world and diving deep into dungeons, you will encounter enemies with which you must do battle. The adventure will be over if everyone in your party is KO'd. Should your journey meet an unfortunate end, you can continue from your last save point. So it's in your interest to save often. Select data from the menu screen to save. There's also an autosave feature to periodically keep you covered. Alright. I understand. Okay, nothing here. An enemy appears. What do we have here? Can't be too strong, right? Let's do this. Ah, now they're explaining gems. These are gems. You'll need to spend them to use certain skills. In one gem, whenever you take an action and can store up to 10 at one time. I can indicate how many gems a skill costs. Oh, this is what indicates that. Okay. You can't use a skill if you don't have enough gems. Ah, okay. But the white heal costs gems. But the magic strike does not. Those guys seem to be identical. Generate one gem. Now you see, I don't know why we got the gem here. Maybe if one of our characters gets to move, we just get a gem. This is 13, so it's 9. Yeah, this guy can be toasted like this. Nice. Critical boys. That was lucky. Some of your attacks are elemental in nature. The six elements are fire, water, bold, wind, light and dark. Okay. Cards take more damage from elements they are weak to and less damage from elements they are resistant against. That makes sense. Knowing your enemy's weaknesses and strengths will help you choose which skills to wield in to your advantage. Classic RPG. Also known as don't stab the skeleton. Um, I'm gonna use a lightning strike here. I don't see why not. Come on, high rolls, baby! Four, not bad. There he goes. Toasted. Easy peasy. 38 EXP, 40 gold. Winfried leveled up. Uh, it's like one point in each except for speed, I suppose. Oh yeah, and speed is probably what determines the turn order, huh? Ah, learned white light. Heal. Attack plus 10 light damage. That seems pretty good. Okay, Berwin, good job. 
And Hedwin, likewise. Learned Zephyr. Add value of roll to attack and deal wind damage. Seems a little bit like the lightning strike thing. Treasure discovered. Oh, so I can pick one? Please pick one. Uh, I'm gonna pick the one on the right. An antidote. Oh, and you show me what I didn't get? That's dirty. <laughs> that feels bad. Why do you do this? When you learn HP, open the menu and select owned cards to use recovery items. Uh, to use a recovery item or take a rest at an inn in town. You you cards? Nah, that's, that's okay. I think I get it. An enemy appears. Just watch me dispatch of him. Okay. Select items with the R key. Make sure to use items when you need them. While carrying many items, press the N or M key to scroll. N or M. It's very strange. Okay, um, I could do a white light, but I think I'll, I'll just deal damage here. Those guys don't seem terribly strong. Maybe I even... Uh, maybe I, I'll just attack normally. Actually, you can't even attack normally. What if I generate one gem? Will this carry over to the next fight? I guess we'll see. Let's test it out. They're just healing here. Well, let's just do a downward strike there. They have like no defense, so that's no problem. But this dude needs gems to attack, actually. Okay, and then, yeah, I, I mean, we might as well get a little bit of fire damage here. Weak and critical. I don't know why he crits so much, man. I'm not complaining, though. 32 EXP, I'll take it. It's easy enough. And we have a chest right there. Treasure chest found. Another antidote. Now I feel so bad for buying that singular antidote at the apothecary, man. Okay, where's the bone beast? It was fleeing west. But that's where I'll go. The fellowship moves westward, only to be unnerved by the sight of a human figure moving through the trees. The presence of large packs suggests a traveler. Or a thief. How will you hail the traveler? Hot is it not, or caught sight of any monsters? Is it hot is it not? The sun bears down hard upon us this day, Winifred says, approaching him. The traveler lets out a chuckle. Indeed, I've just been swimming in the sea to the west. Then perhaps he is heading east? I beg your pardon, but did you catch sight of a monster fleeing west? Winifred inquires. He gives her a puzzled look. There's nothing out there but the sea, he says. That and a cave full of monsters on the opposite shore. Hmm. I suspect you might find your quarry there. The fellowship exchange glances and nod as if to say, then that is where we shall go. Alas, they will need a boat to cross the sea. I have a feeling maybe this monster actually transforms or something Traveler like that. hoists his packs, suggests the fellowship speak to the fisherman on the western shore, and takes his leave. So something is striking me as very wrong here. Search the western shore for the fisherman who may grant you safe passage across the sea. Search the shore, they say. Now I can see this. There's the ocean right there. Okay, who wants to get toasted? Okay, how many gems do we start with? Okay, yeah, they do not carry over at all. Um, this thing has 14. This takes two gems. Deal attack plus 10 light damage. That's a total value of 20. Goodbye. And then here, 
Maybe give it a little flame. Weak. Easy peasy. I can see the battles going very quickly when you know what you're doing, like especially when you're high level. Another level up for you, okay. Let's find that fisherman then. Oh fisherman. Maybe we should follow where the path of the elites. Oh, an enemy appears. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, this just seems like a goblin dude. Why not just do a white light on him immediately? It's like two defense. Blam. Absolutely destroyed. It's nice when you know you don't have to hold back. Ah, full swing. Deal attack plus 8 damage. Nice fixed number, hmm? Well, don't mind if I get the chest then. Treasure chest found. Ah, nice, okay. A little revive. Okay, that path leads north. Let's not go there just yet. I haven't quite finished the story for this section, <laughs> see? This is just the end problems. Okay. So you say I should head south then? Event. A bizarre rock appeared. It seems primed to explode. <laughs> A bizarre rock? Roll the dice to see what it becomes after it explodes. Hmm. The bizarre rock transformed into a fear rock. The only way out of this fight is through it. Alright, I don't know whether it is bad or not, but we'll see. A fear rock. Route the enemy. Route the enemy, you say? I'm, I'm... Oh, this thing has 50 defense. Okay. Uh, can I even do anything against you? How the heck do I... Maybe you're weak to light? Yeah, zero, one. Generate one gem. Let's try this. I don't know whether he has any elemental weaknesses or not. Zero, 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 one. Attack damage plus eight or Add value of roll to attack and deal bolt damage. Let's try and see whether he's weak to lightning or something. Also, a 5 is not too bad. Maybe it just doesn't have any weaknesses. Okay, it's just 1 damage, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, let's just deal some damage. Critical, nice. And... Chuck a little flame in there. What if you just do the full swing? It's nearly not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought the guy would wreck us, but he also only has 5 attack, you know? Little plonk. It's not bad at all, actually. I give you another Zephyr here. Do I not have enough gems? No, I, I think I do. There we go. That was weird. <laughs> One. Fantastic. Okay, and then maybe you can just... Can just full swing this one. Nice. There we go. One hundred twenty-five EXP. I'll take it, man. Two hundred gold is also not bad. This guy's already level eight. Don't freeze. Deal attack plus four water damage. Inflict freeze if roll is five or greater. Oh, finally, a little bit of a deeper mechanic here. Yeah, let's not go there just yet. And where exactly do you want me to go? Search the western shore for the fisherman. Okay, got him. <laughs> It's just easier. Huh? 
Oh, okay. He's, the fisherman is not on the ship, of course. It's this half-naked young man. Excuse me. The fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite physique hauls a net out of the water, his muscles rippling. <laughs> exquisite physique is right, man. He also has a little thigh tattoo. This is no time for lustful reverie. Winifred races to his side and asks that he give the fellowship safe passage aboard the ship. He also has the worst haircut of all time. That vessel is cursed, the fisherman mutters, trembling. Cursed, you say? Night after night, it leaves port without a soul aboard, headed I know not where. Come morning, it is once again anchored here. I think somebody's just taking your ship out for a cruise every night, my man. This, to the fisherman's mind, is the result of a curse. His head drops into his hands. With but a single dispeller, I am certain I could lift it and sail away. Alas, the Fellowship find themselves without any dispeller. They resolve to return to Nexton and find some. Hmm. Let's go to Nexton for some dispeller and... and to take back to the fishermen on the western shore. Okay. I can do that. So... Yeah, we can jump. We already heard that. So the speller is this hand-looking thing we found in the item shop, right? Uh, let's move over like this and then hit him with the enter. There we go. Enter next. Yes. It's nice that they don't make you backtrack through encounters and stuff like that again. Uh, was that the apothecary? I the think it was. The fellowship hears a young man arguing with the apothecary. Make it cheaper, he bellows. <laughs> uh -oh. As the fellowship approaches the door to intervene, the young man bursts out of the shop. He storms past Winifred, nearly crashing into her. Watch where you're going, she shouts after him. But he makes no move to apologize, instead squaring his shoulders and walking off. What a hateful little man, grumbles the apothecary. <laughs> hateful little man. Winifred vows to teach him proper manners, should they ever meet again. I have a feeling they will, because they haven't revealed his character portrait, you know. Okay. You may help me by giving me one dispeller, please, young woman. It is this for 500. I only own 383. There is a problem. Can I sell you something? Uh, items. You know what? It kind of hurts, but I will sell you this. Just so we can progress a little bit here. Now I can afford this freaking dispeller. You know, like, I personally would have just waited the ship left port by itself and just snuck onto it but okay they want to spend 500 gold they can spend 500 gold will that be all yes i believe so okay yep i understand i will deliver it to the fisherman at once let me just jump to the exit here plonk yes it's a little weird that you have to use the arrow keys to jump, but it doesn't feel that bad actually. It's just also weird because I'm sitting in front of a microphone, right? I have to kind of reach around it. There you go. Winifred hands the despairing fisherman a dispeller and asks again for safe passage to the cave. The fisherman snatches up Oops. the concoction. So delighted that his pectoral muscles begin twitching, the fellowship politely ignores this fact. <laughs> All right. He opens the bottle and proceeds to douse the ship. The monsters that await you in the cave are most formidable. Speak with the fishermen when you're ready to depart. You know I gotta take a look. Speak to the fishermen, yep. 
Also, what is this tile actually? Oh, you can't walk there, huh? Oh, I just bounce off for some reason. Okay. Another event. A monster appears to be in pain. Seems the poor thing's been poisoned. You may be able to aid it by administering some antidote. So here's the thing. Why would you help the goblin, right? Normally you will just kill it. I mean, I will help it. We also have like three antidotes, so that doesn't really bother me that much. You take pity on the creature and administer some antidote. Healthy once more, it gets up and makes its way to who knows where. Every so often, you catch it looking back at you. But before long, it's out of sight. Yeah, I didn't really expect to gain anything from that, to be honest. It's weird how they bounce me off the card sometimes. It's like, why are mountains not traversable, you know? Ah, another event right there. Lying in the dirt, you find an old telescope. You pick it up and angle it toward the coastline. Okay, what is on the coastline? Peering through the lens, you see something in the distance, but you can't tell exactly what. <laughs> A big fish? All you know is there's something up ahead. You should be able to tell for certain what it is if you get closer. What will you do? Inch closer. You toss the janky telescope aside and creep forward as silently as you can. <laughs> Looks like you spied a fish twitching and flopping along the shore. Feisty fish. A fish is found in most oceans, both delicious and medicinal. With one final great effort, it heaves itself back into the safety of the sea. What the heck? We didn't even get the fish? Son of a bitch. Winifred, why are you so slow? Is there anything else I can explore you? There's no face down cards anymore. What if I try jumping to this? Oh, I can actually go up here to a certain extent at least. Ah yeah, and then they will stop me right here, huh? I can still uncover something here. It just forbid me from going farther north. Here we go, another event. Ah, another bizarre rock. Roll the dice, baby. Three. Pink. Oh, the wow. bizarre rock transformed into an aqua rock. The only way out of this fight is through it. Didn't we also roll a three last time, or what did we roll? Okay, let's see about you, huh? Route the enemy. Route the enemy, he says. Uh, let's just give you a magical strike for once. Oops, I somehow turned the cards around. Boom, one. So now the question is... Maybe I can freeze you? I mean, you are water, I don't know whether it is good or actually bad. Status element is 5 or greater. There is not 5 or greater. There is 1 damage. Uh, let's try a lightning strike here, Pokemon logic. I mean, that would in theory be good. Oh, nice, yeah. Okay, it's weak to lightning. How about that? Got him, Berwin. Mashed. Oh, 50 XP is not bad. Okay, leveled up a little bit here, and that's nice. No new skills. That's not so nice, but it's alright. Ah, here we go, an enemy appears. I'm just making my way back to the fisherman manually now, so we can get a little bit more EXP. Oh, and three enemies, fight. huh? <laughs> Voices and fight. Uh... 12, 15, 12. I'll just white light you. Because he has high attack, so. There we go. Add value of roll. 
Or I could do the flame. Just do the flame here. Nice. You are actually faster than Berwin. Berwin is very slow. Full swing, brother. Nice. Got him. Fifty-nine XP for a quick fight. Treasure discovered. This time I'll go with the middle. A quality salve. Okay. That might be important, actually. Okay, let's head to the dang fisherman. You fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked Orc Child's enemy story. Alright. I mean, in the full release, I will obviously read all the stories, but in the demo, you know, you only get half the story, and it's like, oh, come back in the retail version, so I'd rather just save it for them. We get the general twist. Adventures are advised to be at least level 7. Don't worry, we are got it. Are you ready it. to set sail for the cave? The fisherman asks, how will you respond? I will say, uh, yes, daddy. Let's shove off then. He beckons you aboard. All right. Always trust your local, very muscular fisherman. Let me the just take a sip from my water. The mouth of a dank cave. It's damp, rocky expanse threatening to swallow them. Monsters could come pouring out at any moment. Sounds good to me. The fisherman has anchored the ship in the cove. Come back here when you're ready to return to the mainland, he says. Alrighty. Move further into the cave. Okay, I will do just that then. And an enemy already, alright. It's nice that there's no mana, just the gems. Let's do this. Ah, so you see there's a skeleton right here. Let's give it a white light and see whether that's good against uh, undead. Yes, okay. As I had guessed. Fantastic. And this thing is an orc child apparently. Let's give it a flame. Nice. Com combat is very smooth actually, I like it. I mean it's turn based, but it's not restricted by... Like how slow turn-based combat can be sometimes. Also watch this guy go off the rails, man. He's already level 9. Just the middle one again, maybe. A cure target of paralysis. Actually, that's very nice. I haven't had one of these yet. I'll take it. Okay. See where this leads, I suppose. Another enemy appears. Man, I like this actually. Like this game in general, also how the cards flip and something Let's like that. Let's do this. Holy shit, what the heck are we up against here? Two mushroom men. Or mushroom children or whatever. For now we seem to be adequately strong. Looking forward to an, like a boss absolutely obliterating us. Nice, okay, they're also weak to fire. I kind of assumed so, but you never know what they, you know, what curveballs, curveballs? What curveballs they will throw at you. Okay, another level up for Winifred, also level 9 already, nice. I've heard nobody say how difficult the demo actually was. So I just assume it wasn't outrageously difficult. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. Treasure chest found. Magic staff, nice, crafted by an artisan of great renown. Sounds good to me. Uh, bring me into the equipment menu. And I will equip her with this, I think. Sacred staff, no. Give her this one. There we go. Fantastic. Also really quick menu, I just hit escape and it brought me out directly, very nice. Okay, who's next here? Singular mushroom man, white light bitch. Wow, 11 and 12, nice, that feels good. 
Planck. Easy peasy. Level up for Bowen. Next. Oops. I feel like they just shouldn't allow you to walk onto these. It's so annoying that it bounces you off like that. Okay, just walk through the maze, man. Here we go, another enemy. They love the random encounters. It feels very old school Final Fantasy like at the same time somehow. Like traversing a dungeon like this. Don't worry, I won't hold back, my man. You got absolutely blasted, and then I would like to shoot uh, one flame, please. And goodbye. Nice. 45 EXP, a little bit of gold. Thank you kindly. Next. I have a feeling it, the boss might be somewhere up here. Maybe I should explore down there. Maybe there's a weapon or something I'm missing. And fight. What the heck is this? Whatever it is, it has 30 HP but only 5 defense. Excuse me? Oh, that, that was weird. I would like to use the white light and just do this. You're not weak to light. Maybe you are weak to flame? It's like an ogre or something. Also not weak to flame. But by itself worth 44 EXP. Not looking forward to facing two or three of these. Yeah, let's head down here. Oh, there's a gate. Or a door. The door is shut tight. You spy a keyhole on it. Suggesting the existence of a corresponding key. A very unsuspicious door in the middle of a dungeon. And an enemy. Okay, uh, let's give him the white light. Boom. And then another fireball here. Yep, exactly enough. I love it. And EXP. Can't step over the door, right? It just says, oh, the door shuts tight. Yeah, okay. So this is the other room, basically. So we have to head north. There must be a key somewhere, is what they say. More enemies in this little cave. I like the game so far, I man. It's very, very atmospheric, actually. If my room wasn't 34 degrees, I would be very relaxed right now. <laughs> okay, let's let's give it to him. Like, you know, they made it sound like enemies in here were absolute hell, but actually, we are getting through all right. Maybe because I didn't beeline just to the fishermen and leave everything unexplored and stuff like that. I feel like we had a fair share of fights and events until we came here. We already arrived when he was like level 8 or 9 or something. There you go, he's level 10 now. They said you should at least be level 7 entering this. You fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked Red Fungo's enemy story. Red Fungo. Okay, these are just walls here. He must be somewhere around here by extension then, I assume. Probably in this. There we go. Obtain a simple key. Dude, good thing monsters always hide their keys outside of, you know, the doors they belong to. What do we have here? It is... Don't hold back. A skeleton. One criticism I have of this game is that the narrator sometimes just cuts in like this you just like don't hold back and it's very irritating if you have the voice set too loud which i have yeah i know it's uh, it's very weird somehow okay here we go the door before you is shut quite tightly it appears to have a keyhole 
The simple key may be of use here. You know what I mean by him by him cutting in is if there's a card, I'm like, okay, now I need to shut up so he can talk. But sometimes when he starts saying something at the beginning of only some battles, he will talk over me or I will talk over him or whatever. And it's, I don't know, it's <laughs> very strange. And yes, insert the key. The fellowship slides the simple key into the keyhole and turns it. The lock opens with a thunk. Nice. We are home. Uh oh, an enemy appears. Anything bad waiting for us on this side? Oh no, it's just one more of these. I don't even know what this is, man. An ogre? It has a very big hammer. Whatever it is, we'll give it a zephyr this time. Just to see whether it's effective or not. Yeah, it's weak actually to wind. Okay. You never know when the information becomes crucial. 44 EXP again. Winifred levels up. Nice. We're at level 10 now with her too. I think only Berwin is still level 9. But are all of these walls? That seems to be the case. Do we descend the stairs? Yes. Okay, dank cave. Another door. An iron door towers before you. It has rather conspicuous handles. <laughs> what do you mean conspicuous? What will you do? Use a cart and hold the enter key to raise it up ever so slightly. If you hold it just long enough, you might be able to peek at what it contains. Push the door handle, pull on the door handle. What about this one? Okay, so this one moves not an inch. Push the door handle. It moves not an inch. That's weird. Berwin pushes the massive handles against the door with all his might. It moves not an inch. Berwin gives the door a roundhouse kick out of pure frustration. As one does. A man just to my liking. As his foot connects, the door trundles to the side. So it was one of those sliding contraptions. <laughs> Fuck, it's a sliding door in a dungeon? What the heck, Yoko Taro? What did the team think? It's not a sliding door, man. Look at the portrait. It should be rolled to the side. What the heck, man? Something leaps out at the fellowship from the darkness. Winifred deftly parries the attack with her staff. Edwin looks fondly at Winifred. Only to have his reverie interrupted by Berwin's cry of, It's coming back. Skeleton time, it seems. Let's Two of do them. this. Let's go, white light, boop. Easy peasy, weak. Now, are those guys also weak to fire, actually? Because it's like an undead trope. Nah, but we crit him and kill him in one fellow swing anyway, so... Goodbye, skeletons. 56 EXP for this. Ah, Berwin leveled up. Also no new skill, that feels bad. Level 10 should be like a milestone thing in my opinion. Okay, fulfilled the requirements for Skull Soldier's story. Ah. The fellowship approaches the chest, only for a voice deep as an earthquake to echo through the cavern. You shall not have it, a voice growls. The fellowship warily eyes their surroundings as several somethings leap out of the shadows. Several somethings. What might that be? Dang. Very tremendous slimes and a well-armed skeleton soldier. Uh, so these guys, I love how they're clutching a little saber in the shield. They have seven defense. Should I deal with them first? Or should I go on this guy because he's probably weak to the white light? 
Maybe deal with the slimes first to reduce their numbers. Perfect. Critical. That was lucky. Yep, that was lucky actually. Deal damage twice, okay. I mean two times zero, two times one. Doesn't strike me as too bad, but flame time here we go. Weak. Attack plus three damage. Not that bad yet. Uh, just deal some damage to this guy then. No need to even use a gem or anything, you know. Oh, this guy regenerates or something, huh? White light, brother. It's 28 damage, that's pretty good. Two misses. You poor fool. Flame time. Just crits him mercilessly. I think he has a really high crit rate or like I'm very lucky with his Congrats. attacks. He's <laughs> just like, oh congrats. You've beaten two slimes and a skeleton into oblivion. It wasn't too bad. Winifred neatly steps through the fiend's remains and opens the chest. Inside is what appears for all the world to be an ordinary medicine bottle. Hmm. Okay. At last, the royal treasure is in safe hands once more, Hedwin sighs. Winifred and Berwin nod in agreement. Is that really it? Treasure in hand, the fellowship exit the cave, exalted. Why do I have a feeling that this is not time, quite it? The fellowship find themselves before the queen once more. They offer her the retrieved treasure. As reward for the arduous task of returning our prized possession, I bid you name anything you desire, she proclaims. She is positively beaming and seems prepared to shower the fellowship with riches, whether they demand them or not. Why do I get such a sinister feeling here, man? But at that moment... Now oh, there we go! A massive roar, the likes of which had never been heard before, shakes the entire castle. And maybe it's the titular Isle Dragon? As the roar recedes, one of the royal guard, pale as a sheet, bursts into the royal hall. He struggles to gather his breath. Just now, over the castle, a... a dragon, he pants to Queen. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm on solid coming. A dragon. So the great evil has returned. Queen Nilla turns her gaze to the sky, dumbfounded. So the monster troubles are connected, Hedwin says so under his breath, so the queen does not hear. A profound silence settles over the royal hall. The fellowship stand tall, unflinching. As though they know what must be done in the face of such a crisis. What what needs to be done? Is this our time to sacrifice ourselves for the well-being of the kingdom? What will become of the land now that the dragon has returned? You tell me, narrator. I'm afraid that will have to wait. We're all out of time for this portion of the adventure. I suspected as much, but I'm still sad. <laughs> Don't you worry. We'll continue the tale another time. I look forward to our next session. Me too. Until then, I bid you good day. Farewell, friend. Man, uh, I don't know. I'm so excited for this now. I went into this without really, uh, without really expecting anything. But when in the end there, the typical like near slash Ragengard music kicked in I was like man that's you know I'm I'm so waiting for the big twist of course they won't reveal it for the demo I guess but there must be something right when Yoko Taro and his team when they work on a story they never just pull some typical RPG stuff they, they're never like you know oh, these are the four crystals you must purify them 
congratulations, you've saved the world. I would be very surprised if that was the case here. And, uh, yeah, I have a feeling our heroes might not be long for this world somehow. At least not all of them. But we'll see, I guess. So that was the demo. Um, <laughs> visit the product page. No, not for now. It's a little awkward. Here, guys, I'm gonna say thank you very much for watching. Um, if you notice a little cut in the beginning of the... Uh, not in the beginning of the episode, but if you notice a little cut, like... The cut will have occurred like 10 minutes ago or something. That was because I made a video about this and it was a little too long. And wanted to split this into two, but this part wasn't that long. So now I'm just gonna merge them into one video. So, okay. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this little demo. I hope you're hyped for the re full release of this game. But for now I'm gonna say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Ch check this game out on Steam. This is where I played it by the way. And yeah, see you around, stay healthy, stay safe and bye bye.